everybody. Welcome back to another video. And uh, I've had some time to think about it. I've had some time to process things, gather my thoughts, allow for some things to shake out. So today, I'm going to be talking about the Damian Lillard trade from the perspective of a lifelong fan of the Portland Trail Blazers. Now it's extremely hot today in Australia. Um, it's like 34 degrees Celsius, so I'm not going to be actually wearing my hat. But, um, I was kind of waiting to see if the Blazers ended up trading Malcolm Brogdon, who they got in the Drew Holiday trade. It doesn't look like they will. The GM made some comments um, that were kind of talking like, oh, we want him to stick around, be a veteran for the young guys to learn from, so I feel like we're going to trade him at the trade deadline. So since the return is basically finalized now, um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. So um, I mentioned this in my NBA draft recap video a few months ago when the NBA draft happened, but the moment the Blazers did not trade the third overall pick and instead drafted Scoot Anderson, um, it became obvious at that point that Damian Lillard was going to be traded. Um, now to quickly just talk about some of the discourse, some of the opinions and stuff that I've seen and my take on it. Um, there's some people saying that like the GM wasn't actually trying to build a contender around Dame. His whole plan was true the whole time, things like that. Um, I do genuinely believe that there was a legitimate effort to package the third overall pick with Anthony Simons to try and bring in a win-now player to put next to Dame in Portland. I do believe that, um, I just personally feel like that there was not a satisfactory trade out there for the third pick partnered with Simons to bring anybody back that could move the needle to put the Blazers into a contention position. I just don't think a trade out there existed for the assets that Portland had to build a championship roster. So I do think the GM explored those avenues, but I think that he kind of found a dead end there. And instead of making a, a move that he can sell as a win-now move, like Neil Olshea did with the Norman Powell and Robert Covington trade, uh, bringing in those two guys, saying like, oh, this is a championship roster now, when it wasn't. Um, instead of doing the Band-Aid move, he ripped the Band-Aid off. So I actually, you know, because I've been saying for a while now, well, my personal opinion is that the Blazers should have rebuilt after the Pelicans series. When the Blazers lost in the first round of the Pelicans, they should have treated C.J. McCollum right then. They kept Dame and CJ together too long, they dragged it out, and that created the situation the Blazers find themselves in now, and I mainly placed that blame at the feet of the previous general manager, Neil O'Shea. But, um, it did end up happening. Damian Lillard was traded. Originally, all the rumors and everything was that Dame wanted to go to Miami. There was so much... Like, Dame's only going to play in Miami, he won't show up for other teams, it's the only team he wants, yada, yada, yada. I personally...
personally never bought into that. And I'm also not one that, like, you know, my opinion is I, I, I cheer for the team, not the player. You know, I'm from Portland. I lived in Portland, born and raised in Portland. Lived there 29 years of my life, or 28 years of my life. I'm a Portland fan. I was a fan before Dame, will be a fan after Dame. Like, if you don't want to be there, okay. But we have to look for the best return for the team. And I think the Blazers did well in this trade. Um, I'll just talk about the complete return now. Um, so, there was a three-way trade that first happened to move out Dame. was sent to the Milwaukee Bucks for Drew Holiday and some picks. And then Portland sent Yusuf Nurkic, Nasir Little, and Keon Johnson to the Phoenix Suns for DeAndre Ayton and Dumani Kamara. Then Portland took Drew Holiday, who they got from the Milwaukee Bucks. And they traded him to the Boston Celtics. For Malcolm Brogdon, Robert Williams III, and I believe two picks. Now the total haul is as follows. And this is the combined total for trading Damian Lillard, uh, Yusuf Nurkic, Nasir Little, Keon Johnson, and Drew Holiday. The Blazers are left with DeAndre Ayton, Robert Williams III, Malcolm Brogdon, and Tumani Kamara. And as far as the picks go, they have a 2029 unprotected first from the Bucks. They have pick swaps in the first round with the Bucks in 2028 and 2030. They have a 2029 unprotected first round pick from the Celtics. And a 2020 a 2024 first round pick from the Warriors. That is top four protected. So if the Warriors um, have picks one, two, three, or four, they get the pick uh, in next year's draft or actually this coming draft, actually. Um, but if the pick is, you know, five or later, the Blazers get the first round pick for the Warriors. And uh, compared to the reported packages from the Heat, the Blazers end up with a way better haul here than they could have gotten from Miami, uh, who are offering, like, Tyler Harris, Jovic and Lowry to make salary work and then like a pick or two and the issue is with Tyler Hero is the same issue that the Blazers have had trying to move Anthony Simons at the draft package with that number three pick is that guards who can only score are a dime a dozen in the NBA so they don't really hold that much draft capital or that much, they're not that big of an asset, I should say. Like, every team has a 6'3 guard who can shoot and score. Like, everybody has that. So, they're not really that valuable in the trade market. If, like, that's all he can do. Like, Anthony Simons, like, Tyler Harrow, like, you know, insert player here that can never get traded, even though they're always in rumors. So... The Blazers end up with Aiton Williams, Brogdon, and Kamara. I'm gonna just look at them individually. Sorry to clear my throat there. Um, DeAndre Aiton last season, he played 67 games, averaged 18 points and 10 rebounds. 59% uh, field goal percentage, 76% free throw, 
um, for his career, he's averaging 16.7 points, 10.4 rebounds, 1.6 assists, almost 60% of your goal, um, 75.5% free throw, you know, for his career, and he is, it doesn't say, that's interesting, they do put their height or something, um, They don't have that here. I'm not sure how tall he is. He's like a just under seven feet, I think. He might be like six, six ten, six. He's six eleven. There's a six eleven, two hundred fifty pounds. Um, was the first overall pick in the 2018 draft, uh, the Luca draft. Um, I. I'm actually excited for Aiden. I know that there's some concerns about his motor and his, um, like, engagement in Phoenix. But I think that his relationship with that Phoenix front office was extremely strained. We saw that during the contract negotiations. And, I, you know, that everything got really drawn out. Everything got really ugly, especially in the media, them shooting back and forth at each other through middlemen in the media. So I really think last season, Aiden was not engaged with that team at all because of what had happened with him in the front office. And then the Suns were kind of dysfunctional in general a little bit. Um, and it, obviously with the way the Suns were with you know, trying to bring in big name players, the trades they were making, his name was always in trade rumors. So I actually think a change of scenery could be good for Aiden, and he's going to be a veteran on this new Blazers team that's extremely young. Blazers are going to be right up there with the Thunders, one of the youngest teams in the league, like average age is like 21 years old, I think. Um, and Hayden's 25, so he's now a veteran on this team. I also think Aiden, he's an offensive-minded big man. Um, but the Suns, they had so many other scoring options. He wasn't getting the touches to do that, and he was more often expected to be a defensive presence. Whereas I think with this Blazers team and kind of what the coach talked about in interviews today, they said they want the team to be up-tempo, fast-paced, transition offense, run and gun. So I'm picturing just running up and, the, up and down the court, long passes, you know, cutting in, lots of cutting in, attacking the basket, just constant movement. And I think a system like that could be good for Aiden. Because, like, even when Aiden is, like, unengaged, he's, like, a 20 and 10 player. Like, he can sleepwalk to that in, in Phoenix. So, I actually, I am really excited about DeAndre Aiden. Like, once I saw that he was part of this return, I started feeling a lot better about the trade. Um, and I think he's going to be the best center the Blazers have had in a long time. Like, Nurkic was good. I love Nurkic. But he really coasted a lot. Uh, Nurkic was afraid to really attack the basket, especially after his really bad leg injury. Like, there was periods of time where Nurkic was refusing to dunk the ball. He'd be under the basket and do a little, like, flip shot that would rim out. Because he was scared to go for a dunk because of his leg injury that he had a few years back. Uh, but Aiden, he's going to attack the rim. I think him in pick and roll situations with Scoot Henderson is going to be really good. Uh, now the other big man we got, uh, the one from Boston, is Robert Williams, like the Time Lord. 6'9", 237 pounds, a little bit smaller. And I know Robert Williams has some injury concerns. He only played 35 games last year. 8 points, 8.3 rebounds, 75% from the field, 61% free throw. When he is 
he's healthy. He's a really good defensive player. He gets a ton of blocks. Um, he was a DPOY candidate before going down with injury last season. Um, he's an you know, when he's healthy, he is an NBA All Defensive Team candidate. The problem is his health. Um, now he's still pretty young. He's only 25 years old. He's about to turn 26. So I do think there's still potential there. The Blazers have said they want to keep him and they want to run sets with him and Aiden on the floor at the same time. But let's say you have Robert Williams at the five, uh, Jeremy Grant at the four. You can go a little bit small there. You can put Williams at the four, Aiden at the five, go big. Um, there's also been talk of running Aiden at the four and Williams at the five. So you have a bigger power forward that's a little more offensive minded in Aiden and then Williams at center. But if he can stay healthy, I think Robert Williams could be really good for the Blazers. Um, and right now they have the best center depth they've had since 20, 2017. 2018, like really good center depth uh, since since Ed Davis left. When Ed Davis was the backup center, that was the last time, because we had those seasons with Nurkic and Whiteside, and then we had Cantor for a little bit as the backup. And now I liked Whiteside and Cantor, but you know I think Williams is better than either of those guys. Again, it just comes down to health with him. Um, Brogdon, six man of the year. He's been rookie of the year. Made all rookie, and Brogdon is a great player. Malcolm Brogdon, 6'5, 229 pound point guard. Um, played 67 games last season, 15 points, four rebounds, four assists. Shoots 44% from three, 48% from the field, 87% free throw. Um, like I said, I think we move Brogdon at the deadline. I don't think he stays here till the end of the year. I think he still has a couple years on his contract, too. Um, but he is 30 years old, gonna be 31 before the end of the season. So he's, he's going to want to be on a contender. And I think we, we look at the landscape at the NBA, the deadline, and, um, you know, move him to a team that is contending. Um, I think we'll probably get a pick back for him. Maybe a, maybe a protected first, a late first, a couple of seconds maybe. I don't know. But I think we get a decent haul for Brogdon. But in the meantime, I think he will be a really good mentor for Scoot Henderson, for Anthony Simons, for Shaden Sharp. I'm sorry, my, my throat's getting really, like, kind of clogged this morning. I don't know why. Uh, I think he'll be a really great mentor for those young guys. You know, play a little bit, probably not too much. Movement the deadline. I'm not mad about that. And finally, uh, Tumani Kamara came back from the Phoenix Sun, 6'8", turn 20 pound forward. Um, in college, he played 34 games, averaged 14 points, eight and a half rebounds, two assists. Um, average from three, average from the field. Uh, A-10 all defense, A-10 all tourney, two times all A-10. He had a couple good games in Summer League. He had one game in Summer League where he put up 20 and 10 against the Grizzlies. I think he had another 20-point game against the Bucks. funny enough, in Summer League. Now, obviously, Summer League, you can't read too much into it. I don't think he's going to be a rotation player at any point of the season. He might be a deep bench guy. Um, funny enough... This is the first season that the Trailblazers are going to have their own G League team instead of like having to send players to other teams, G League teams. 
so they picked like the perfect time to, to put that in so I imagine Kamara will be in the G League Jabari Walker, Chris Murray uh, Ray and Rubert but they'll still, still be there in the Portland area so you can kind of work with them more on development keep a closer eye on their progress and I think that will be really you know this team now transitioning to a younger rebuilding team having that G League team will be huge and uh, to Monty Kamara he has all the skills 6'8", 220 pounds, big wing, wingspan uh, he's a European player he's from Belgium Ryan Rupert has a similar build as him similar game we have a lot of young guys where it's like you know looking at the roster Moses Brown John Butler Kamara Skyler Mays, Chris Murray, Rand Rupert, any of those guys, if any of them just, you know, click and, um, you know, turn into something. You have a lot of, you have a lot of scratch off tickets, and just one of them has to be a winner, you know. Um, I don't think all those guys will hit, but I think either Murray or Kamara is the best bet, personally. Um, but I, I, Ryan Rupert, I'm kind of excited about as well, but we'll see. Got really dark all of a sudden. That's weird. Um, anyway, yeah. Um, it's going to be an interesting team this season. It's sad to see Dame go. You know, my entire life, Dame has been. You know, uh, I was. You know, I started getting into basketball the tail end of the Brandon Roy years. But I never knew a healthy. Brandon Roy or Greg Oden really so for me the big you know Blazers player I really loved has always been Dame he's gone now um, I'm probably not going to watch a ton of basketball this season just because I expect the team to not be that great and my hockey team just won a Stanley Cup so I'm going to be giving them a lot of my attention but it's going to be interesting to see um, I'm excited finally see a true rebuild. I think we have the pieces and assets to do a good one. Um, I'm excited to see the young guys with Aiton, to see how Scoot, you know, looks, to see how Sharp progresses. And Anthony Simons, I think, has been slept on up to this point. Um, you know, all of his minutes he played last season without Dame, he popped. So Anthony Simons now, <laughs> he's the longest tenured player on the team. He's one of the vet guards now. He's obviously going to be starting at the two. Uh, you might run some small lineups with him at the three, sharp at the two, or sharp at the three, whatever. But um, Scoot, Sharp, Simons, Aiden, Grant, um, Williams. I'm excited for the team. Uh, I think it's going to be good now <laughs> my opinion on the east and this is going to like sound like cope or something I know but people are like oh the Bucks are now the best team in the entire NBA I'm not sure that they are um and I have a few I have a few opinions on that I, I still think the Denver Nuggets are a top three team in the NBA maybe if not still the best team in the NBA Bucks age is gonna be a concern for me and health is gonna be a concern for me. Brooke Lopez is not getting any younger and he's your starting center. Um, Middleton has injury concerns. Giannis is usually fine but I thought he had some injury issues last season. I might be wrong about that. Dame is getting up there. Man's like in his 30s now. Like in the last two seasons, he has dealt with some nagging injury issues, and he's dealt with that plantar fasciitis issue his entire career. Now, obviously, we are sitting him to tank at least a part of the season last season, but that doesn't mean he wasn't also legitimately hurt. And Dame has a lot of athleticism in his game. He attacks the basket. He, you know, people know him for his shooting, but I've watched him his whole career. Dame used to get, like, highlight reel dunks. He still does it from time to time, but 
He's frequently attacking the basket, going into two defenders. Like I said, this might sound like Cope or Sour Grapes or something. I'm not trying to get to sound like that, but I do think health could be an issue for the Bucks. I don't know if that team will be 100% healthy going into the playoffs. Also, as somebody who watched Drew Holiday steal Damian Lillard's soul out of his body in the playoffs against the Pelicans, we traded him to Boston, who is going to be the biggest threat to the Bucks in the playoffs. In the East, at least. We traded, like, the best Dame stopper in the league to the team that is going to be challenging them for that top spot in the East from the team he used to play for, funny enough. So I imagine Drew Holiday might be extra motivated in those games against the Bucks. I think the Celtics are underrated at this point. They have Porzingis, they have White, Tatum, Brown, they've got um, Orford, which is really the only question mark for me, but Drew Holiday, Derek White, um, Tatum, Brown, Porzingis, like, that's a good team. Uh, let me look at their lineup. Uh, Celtics roster. Anthony Davis. 
just going to the Lakers has been the only one that's like the team making the getting the big name player wins the trade and wins a title. Look at your recent title winners like the Warriors. That team was built through the draft. Then KD comes in, they keep winning, but still they didn't trade for him. I don't think. I think he was a free agent signing. Um Nuggets, that team was built through the draft. You know, it, I'm not going to preordain anybody. The game still to be played, but that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more content just like this almost every single day. And until next time, guys. Bye-bye.